The landscape of consumer access has radically expanded, especially with the video game industry. With digital distribution, mainstream multiplayer, and the explosion of mobile, the revolution is everywhere. The language of this revolution is found nowhere more dramatically than with crowdfunded gaming. Evil, greedy publishers who delight in safe mediocrity once held all the power, yet crowdfunding meant consumers and developers could finally be free of their corruptions and compromises. How could this not be a good thing, the best thing, to happen to gaming in a generation? Chris Roberts will have an answer for that soon enough. Not by his word, but by his example. But first, let's talk about how funding crowdfunded games work. Or don't. I am a developer. You are the customer I want to reach. When I crowdfund a video game, I can't just sell you the pre-order $60 box product and expect to meet my funding goal. Not being able to sell a million units is why I'm kickstarting in the first place. A proven method to raise funds for my Kickstarter is to offer various bonuses, to include costly ones, to entice excited people like you to give more. There are two types of such bonuses, the physical and the intangible. Physical mementos might include a lapel pin, a poster, a t-shirt, a miniature model, or your portrait painted by one of my game artists. Fans love these intangible bonuses, but depending on what I promise you, these goods may eventually cost more to produce and distribute than they make me, in which case they've lost me money, sometimes at great volume. Hence the appeal of intangible bonuses, a digital soundtrack that you can download, your name included in the game credits, your face on an NPC, a digital book of concept art, a producer credit, a conversation with the developers on Skype. These intangibles usually cost far less money than creating and shipping physical products, yet the perceived value of two backers is still high, so it's not surprising such bonuses are the bread and butter budget boosters of many a crowdfunded video game. Balance them right, and I could net a pretty nice premium over any game pre-sales I secure. So where does Chris Roberts fit in this spectrum? The truth is, he's gone beyond it. Ever the innovator, he's discovered a third form of pre-funding bonus, an intangible far too revolutionary to be numbered alongside digital soundtracks or in-game backer credits, a digital intangible of such high perceived worth to backers that it has catapulted Star Citizen to nearly 180 million in development funding. Chris Roberts invented the Spaceship JPEG. For those not acclimated to Star Citizen, Forewarning, we are going to talk about video game spaceships, and I'm not talking Nostromos and Normandies here. Those video game spaceships come free with their $60 games. No, I'm talking turbo-nerded, fetish-sized, mega-poly game assets that won't come out with your video game unless you pre-order them separately. I'm talking spaceship macro transactions that can cost as much as a used car. Year 6 of development and nearly $180 million raised. The space sim Chris Roberts pitched in 2012 barely exists. He's been building a different star citizen all along. In fact, he's perfected it. And the core gameplay loop of that star citizen is the buying of video game spaceships for a game that doesn't exist yet. Admittedly, this borderline obsessive collector's enthusiasm is something I have absolutely no concept of. Absolutely none whatsoever. But Star Citizen spaceships are sold as more than the sum of their guns, their hulls, their porta potties, and their space blankies. Inside every Star Citizen backer I've met, past and present, there was once a little boy or girl who longed to go to space. Chris Roberts promises no less than to fulfill that aching childhood dream for you. His spaceships are marketed and sold as your escape, your ticket, your portal, to an immersive universe of unending adventure and purpose. The dream you thought died somewhere between your first college aptitude tests and when you had to start paying taxes is alive, and it's only a spaceship, or two, or twenty away. Is fifty bucks, two hundred bucks, two thousand five hundred bucks, really that much to ask for the chance to satisfy, or even fulfill, your childhood dream? Well, luckily for you, 
Star Citizen spaceships are marketed and sold as both the literal and figurative vehicles for fulfilling that almost universal childhood longing. They are your thrilling new identity in a universe of endless possibility, and your time machine back to when you were hopeful enough to long for that very thing. So who do you want to be as you start your new life, or lives? Want to be an intergalactic trucker? A bounty hunter? A deep space explorer? A pirate? Arr! A planetary miner? How about a space farmer? A commercial pilot flying dozens of passengers around? A data runner smuggling encrypted plans? Or how about a space journalist broadcasting on all the exciting news you discover in the universe around you? More at 10. Or maybe a space yacht owner traveling in enviable luxury? There are spaceships for sale to suit dozens of new identities in Star Citizen. Game assets of the highest fidelity, lovingly detailed, sometimes over the course of years. And many are marketed and sold as including unique game mechanics exclusive only to that single ship, meaning only those who own them can truly play their unique roles. Owning them comes with the promise that you can be special and vital in your new role in your unique ship. To see the ads and hear it all described, you'd be forgiven for thinking Star Citizen sounds pretty incredible. And it is. Especially considering that over half the ships I just talked about are still not in the game yet, in year six of development. Those unique game mechanics marketed with each ship, passenger transport, space farming, data running, space journalist, they aren't even designed yet though the ships for those missing designs have been on sale for years. And that immersive universe you heard about? It's comprised of only three moons and a planetoid in a single star system that's still missing 75% of its promised bodies. Nearly 180 million have been raised so far, and the majority of it came not from pre-orders of a $60 game, but from pre-orders of video game spaceships. But this is different! It's crowdfunding! Chris Roberts wouldn't do what those evil, greedy publishers would do. Well, buckle your belts, because I'm going to shatter that facade. It's mid-July 2016, and the Quebec branch of the Huffington Post interviews Turbulent, the digital marketing and platform developers behind Star Citizen's continued funding success. It is stated in that interview that out of the million registered accounts on Star Citizen's website, half of them were actual paying customers, about 500,000. At that time... Over 100 million had been raised in crowdfunding. These are ballpark figures, of course, but turbulent statements confirm them, and we can use this as a reference point in estimating the true backer count relative to both current funding and registered citizens. Currently, the number of citizens is just under 2 million. If we use ballparks, we can say half of those citizens are paying customers. Let's go with 992,000. Remember what I said earlier about not being able to sell a million boxes being the reason you crowdfunded? Well, Chris Roberts, he's almost done it. If every paying backer just bought that $60 pre-order box of the game, he'd be sitting pretty with $59 million. That is only a third of the total funds raised currently. And why is that? Because well over half of the remaining two-thirds comes from those largely undelivered and in many cases barely started video game spaceships. Macrotransactions. In today's video game industry, microtransactions are the big deal, both for the producers and the consumers. Let's take a financial look at one of these supposedly big evil publishers we're running away from with this crowdfunded thing. Activision Blizzard. In their 2017 financial report, Activision Blizzard reports their net bookings as a record $7.16 billion. $5.43 billion of that, three quarters of the total, came from digital channels. Minus the $2 billion from their mobile games division, $3.43 billion comes from their mainstream games, such as Overwatch, Call of Duty, and Destiny. To restate it, a massive disproportion of Activision Blizzard's income is not from box sales, but from loot boxes and microtransactions. And we look back at CIG and Chris Roberts. By the same metric, 
More than two-thirds of CIG's crowdfunding success is not from game sales, it's from asset pre-sales, macro transactions. Taking the long view from here, these two companies don't look very different. You take away the names, you can mistake them both for big, evil, greedy publishers, the ones everyone gripes about. Except Activision Blizzard has actual finished games that they're relentlessly monetizing, and Chris Roberts has hardly anything but his spaceships. Huh, that's kind of depressing. I'm sorry for depressing you. I know what'll cheer you up. Let's go shopping. Do you like spaceships? I know a place where we can buy spaceships. You'll love it. We start at the original crowdfunding push of Star Citizen in October of 2012. Ba -ba there are five spaceships that come with different levels of pledging. A starter spaceship, a space BMW, a space pickup truck, a military dogfighter, and the not but kind of Millennium Falcon. Before the November deadline, a space pirate ship is available for pledging. During the last day live stream, a limited stock of alien bad guy ships are sold, as did a big multi-crew capital ship for $1,000, the Idris. How Star Citizen hit the 6.2 million end of Kickstarter mark, considering the hype, press, and prices, is pretty evident. But how did we reach the unfathomable near $180 million mark? A budget that could fund four or five other standard development games. It's simple. You ignore convention, continue taking pledges, and you keep making spaceships to sell. And you sell them. Nine million in total funding later, April 2013, Chris Roberts announces variants for the starter ship, and then variants for the space BMW a million dollars later. And you're welcome to buy them now, instead of waiting for them at game launch. These variants are essentially reskins promoting new gameplay, like racing and exploration. Suddenly, there are new implied gameplay elements that have spaceships designed just for that gameplay. During the June 2013 livestream, the Avenger goes on sale, a gun with the spaceship built around it. Then the Idris Corvette gets a limited stock reskin and a new price tag. 1250 bucks. This is all before even a single bit of the game is available to backers. We ride the tide to September. A new space racer, a pirate U-hauler, a little bomber and a big bomber, and a space fuel truck. The original dogfighter gets variants, two new alien spaceships, and Idris sail. Again. 2014, the original space truck gets variants in June. New alien ship, and a new light fighter. August, the not Millennium Falcon gets variants as well. September, a space tow truck for salvaging concept sale. October, space yacht for 600 bucks, and the original pirate ship gets variants too. And just before the month ends, a space news van. November, the fan made troop transport from the next great starship goes on sale. Remember that ship, we'll get back to it. Space tour bus, and a destroyer priced at 2500 bucks. The Idris, again, and finally, a new starter ship. And that's only the end of 2014. We haven't begun to scratch the surface of this absurdity. 2015, Salvager, tour bus, and news fan on sale again. Slightly more expensive. The new starter ship gets variants. A mining vessel with spinny bits. Big bomber on sale again. And a new ship, the Aegis Vanguard Heavy Fighter. Ooh, we'll talk about this ship next chapter. Dogfighter resale. And a series of big freight haulers are introduced. The space field truck gets a Mad Max version. A new starter ship with a wing that flips around. Not enough? How about a Space 747 complete with a drink mixing and serving minigame mechanic? I shit you not, this is something they're designing. Late August, Vanguard variant on sale. Science Farmville spaceship, because why not? October, new ship, the Vindicator, I mean Potato, I mean Saber goes on sale. Missed a few ships? Buy a pack with the Idris, again. Repair Yard spaceship, an anniversary sale of old spaceships. Destroyer and Idris on sale again. And the third starter ship gets variants. 2016, new alien scout ship, the bad guy's trash light fighter goes on sale, fuel truck on sale again, another military pack sale, a new ship, it's a cute little miner ship, a new pirate ship, a space motorcycle, because well, why not, a pirate U-hauler goes on sale again too, two little space hatchbacks, a new corvette for 625 then 750 two days later, a weird final fantasy troop transport, another pure racing ship, and a vanguard variant that's a troop transport as well because why the fuck not? 2017, a bit of a break. We're almost there. 
February, new heavy fighter. March, the pirate ships get a sail pack and a new alien fighter. There's a stealth bomber now, a new space bike, the not make a ground vehicle, and a ground buggy, space bike variant, another goddamn space bike, a motherfucking colonization ship. You can buy space land now, an overpowered saber variant you can only get if you buy one of Intel's new SSD bricks, a new actual fighter, and another new fighter. I can't make up any more nicknames. The destroyer and interest go on sale again. In fact, everything is on sale. Buy everything. Don't forget to buy this tank! Phew! Pretty sure I missed a few ships and sails. In fact, I did. Because there's been over 114 individual ships and vehicles that you could have bought, and more than 40 different multi-ship sales and promotions. Remember, all of these spaceships were sold for real money, at anywhere between 35 bucks to 3,000 bucks. None of these have been gifted to all the backers at any point as a thank you for support. Never give away anything you could sell. Okay, rewinding. The next great starship. Imagine going to your fans directly and asking them to make a spaceship for everyone else. Not just an MS Paint drawing, but a fully 3D rendered and textured spaceship for CIG to essentially rebrand and sell to other fans and backers. Over the course of six months, 17 episodes ranging from quick shorts to a full feature-length livestream. CIG pitted these teams from around the world against each other through the familiar American Idol voting and elimination style. And what spaceship does CIG ask these teams to make? A superfighter? Something weird and alien? The ship they themselves want to fly? No. Gunship, gunship, gunship. Gunship? A troop transport with guns. In a game for that moment in time in 2014 that was primarily about shooting spaceships with other spaceships, they asked these fans to essentially make a Space Blackhawk helicopter. So the winning Space Helicopter was eventually put in the hangar but never flight ready, the hangar basically being a showroom for backers to view their spaceships. Until recently it languished in priority hell and was recently pulled out for a quote unquote redesign pass. It currently awaits a concept artist to be assigned to it. Just to make it clear, a team of backers made a spaceship from start to finish for CIG, approved by devs and voted on by other backers, to be sold to the other backers, and was sold and put in the hangar showroom, and then removed from being sold and from being viewed, for a complete visual and design overhaul. Existing now only as a sticky note on a board, a few lines of code, a model, and a vague promise from the past. As you've no doubt learned now, spaceships sure are complicated and exciting things. But on the other hand, spaceships are just basically slabs of meat to sell. You can cook them any number of ways. Smoke, broil, grill, acid bath, stew, boil, and even ruin like I did. But those slabs of tempting meat don't cook themselves and everyone's a picky eater. How do you get your consumers to get excited about opening up their wallets? That answer, unlike the previous, is a far more complicated, convoluted, and nearly incomprehensible dissection of value. Oh man, I forgot about the gray cat. Beep beep!